everyone, and welcome to another edition of Race Face Driving 5 here on RaceFace.tv. Jacob Seelman, as always, back with you, rejoined by Michael King for another episode. And I'll, I'll say the long and short of it, since you and I were on here last, Michael, is your late your dirt late model has had winning speed and done everything at the racetrack for three races in a row except go to victory lane yeah it's uh it's really unfortunate we've got the fastest late model in arkansas right now and uh have have nothing to show for it but uh other than a couple of heat wins and and a a quick time but man the car is just it's really really good right now but just you go through them patches sometimes or sometimes you have them years and it looks like it's one of those years for me so we'll uh we'll get it put back together and come back a little bit faster well you did have one finish that was somewhat notable um to to kick off i think it was the second weekend in june you guys came out that was the weekend where everywhere else rained out except plumerville and they added you very last minute and that was the shoulda woulda coulda ended up second race if i remember yeah, that, right yeah that was a uh the track they did the best they could with all the rain they got and uh, they added us, like you said, at the very last minute. So we didn't have a super big car count. The track was a little sketchy. So um, I was just trying to ride it around and just save my equipment. Well, we got a late race restart, and I took the lead um, going into one and two on the restart. And then coming around to the white flag, I hit a hole big enough to pick the car off the ground in the middle of one and two and let the guy back by me, and I ain't slept since. Overheating issues after that, I know, has has not been the the order of fun. And then your most recent race, right at the end of the month, uh, was going good until it wasn't. Talk me through that one, because I know it started strong and then ended torn up. Yeah, we won the heat by it was almost three seconds over the field in eight laps. That's pretty. That's hauling hauling some mail there. So we had a fast car and. The track decided at the last minute, too, to do passing points instead of just straight up. And unfortunately, when you start on the pole, you don't have a chance to gain passing points. Right. So that set us back a little bit and started us fourth. And we were definitely, I think, faster. Just didn't have a – we only got like three laps to, you know, find a line. And uh, I was I was trying to make a move for, for second and I just come together with another car. They, they were underneath me, but I couldn't see them. It was just a racing deal, you know. It was no intent on anybody's – either side. It was just – one of them racing deals and unfortunately we got the we got the worst end of it it broke um the lower control bar on the on the bird cage and ended our night i was so that was going to lead right into what i was going to ask how is the car i know you've been been working through repairs the last week or so to uh, get yourself ready to be back on track i just had to assess a little bit of damage it, we went ahead and replaced all the bars just in case checked the rear end um nothing serious just some just some minor uh mechanical issues I was going to say, sounds like one of those where eyeballing it, you were worried it was worse, and then it turned out it could have been a whole lot worse. It could have been way worse. If that if that bar would have broken another way, the rear end would have been all over the place and, and might have might ended up way worse than what it was, yeah. So talk me through July. I know um, we're, we're kind of through that first week, and, and Fourth of July weekend was quiet for you guys while you were working on repairs. What have you guys got coming up this month? Uh, this will probably be the the month we raced the least out of the year um last weekend we were off for uh for waiting on parts to get here for one and we took a much needed much needed break and vacation uh mom and dad took a trip and uh me and me and chrissy went to dallas for the weekend and hung out um come back and i got told monday i gotta work this weekend and then i'm working next weekend so i'm i'm off for two weeks whether the car's ready or not um but we'll be back and we'll get to race a big show on the look at my calendar i think it's the 26th yeah the 26th of uh of july we'll race with the comp cams uh super dirt series at 67 speedway which is probably uh, my favorite track Texar texarkana yep and yep. it's it's funny that you funny that you mentioned that place um i know they and they've been under new management the last year or so actually uh it, it's funny if anybody mentioned 67 now because i start i started announcing with dirt sprint cars years ago um when Tim Crawley was still racing. And now instead of big time race car driver, Tim Crawley, I joke every time I see him and him and Landon at a world of outlaws show, yeah. I said that that's big time promoter, Tim Crawley these days. <laughs> that was actually the track I turned my first laps at in a four cylinder. When I started racing, no kidding. Um, they had an open practice that I think it was that March or February. And we went out there and, and turned my first few laps. It's probably my favorite track just because of how it kind of just fits my driving style. Mm -hmm. But, uh, 
it's been a long time since I won there, but I've done everything but win there since then. Fair enough. Fair enough. No, it's it, it, it's a cool place. And particularly, I know you've had fun kind of more locally running with the Titan Legends series. But for, for those who do follow dirt racing kind of in the in the Midwest and the central part of the country, the Comp Cam series really is kind of the top, I guess we'll call it working man series, unless you're going either to the Outlaws or or the Lucas Tour. So you're you're it's a case where you'll probably pick up a lot of competition. It's comp cams is kind of in a weird spot as a series because they're not quite lucas oil or what outlaw world of outlaws but they're not quite a local series like the titan series is they're kind of just in that weird mid spot so you're going to have guys that could race for the outlaws and lucas show up and you're going to have guys like me that are taking a knife to a gunfight with a small motor going to show up and have fun um but yeah it's it's going to be a, a it was a tough field last year we uh, we actually um it was our second race on this on this car last year uh, when we went and uh, we won the B main and, and made the show. And and that, you know, for, for a team like yours that knows you're a little bit outgunned motor wise, making a feature of that caliber is, is a huge step. It, it's a win when you, when you can go and, and race with them guys, just hang with them even just, mm-hmm. uh, I think we qualified fifth. We got a little bit unlucky in the heat race and I made a couple of driving errors, but started on the pole to be main and, and drove off from them and won that. So, I think now that I, and I didn't even know what I was doing really, <laughs> to be honest, behind the wheel of a late model. Um, that might've been like my 10th race overall. And like, mm-hmm. like I said, it was our second race in that car. But, uh, and now that I know what, what I've got going on, it, it should be a good, good night for us. So last, uh, last drive in five, we did, we uh, were talking about your, your die cast collection, which we can kind of see over one shoulder. And you and I were joking earlier tonight uh, over your other shoulder, we get a, a, a kind of a hint of your shoe collection, which is hanging there on the wall. And I know you, you had made the point at one time that you had pretty much every, every color of Converse known to man, if I remember how you said that. Yeah, I had, I had one for every outfit I, I needed at one point through middle and high school. Is that a case now where you still still try to color coordinate the shoes when you can, or is it just hang there and show them off now? They're kind of more hang there and show them off, unless I like this past weekend where I get to go out and actually do something other than because if I, I have two pairs of shoes that I wear right now, I got one for work and one for the racetrack, and that's that's kind of the only two pairs I wear. And but, uh, any any of us will say who have been to a dirt track, if you're a dirt track racer, you don't ever wear a pair of shoes that you want to keep nice to the dirt track no. because they won't be nice when you leave. No, those are my shop and dirt track shoes because they stay nasty. Um, Give you a chance, as always, quick shout outs, sponsors, people to thank who makes it happen for you and uh, lets you be on here every month. I got to thank mom and dad, first off, for uh, putting up with the chaotic life that I've thrown them into. Uh. PPG, uh, Ape Engines, Friends of Jacqueline, uh, Thurman's Heat and Air, uh, M&A Wrecker Service, Matthew Logan. Um, all these guys do so much for us, and we appreciate y'all. That's Michael King Jr., MKJ. He will be back on track at the end of this month, which hopefully means that after that Comp Cam show, we'll have something really good to talk about uh, for, for our July episode when we tape at the end of the month. Hopefully so. All right. That's Michael King Jr. As always, my name's Jacob Seelman. We'll see you next time here on Driving 5 on Raceface.tv. And of course, keep it tuned to Raceface.tv for all your latest news from around the world of motorsports.